Hello ladies and gentlemen, once again this is Jeremy Smith, Photographer of the Great. Today we're going to be taking a look at Nikon's newly released D3300. Um, this is a camera that there were quite a few rumors about just before it was released, so a lot of people you know, got a really, really good idea of what this camera was going to be. Um, like most other Nikon models these days, this camera is 24 megapixels. Um, Nikon did decide to remove the optical low pass filter on the camera, which will give you a little bit sharper results for certain things. So if you're shooting landscapes um, or if you want a lot of detail in portraits and things like that, the camera is going to produce a little bit sharper results by not having the optical low pass filter. Um, this is something that started with the D7100, but recently Nikon has also done the same thing with the D5300. So it only made sense that they would do the same thing on their new um, beginner entry level model. Um, <clears throat> this camera also features Nikon's new XSpeed 4 image processor. So we see a lot of the uh, we see a lot of the newer capabilities because of that as well. Um, this camera does shoot faster than the 3200. Um, it shoots at five frames a second now, which is something that you used to have to go up to the 5000 series DSLRs to get. So we've got you know quite a bit more speed than what we've had in this range of camera in the past. Um, the XP4 processor also brings about a little bit higher ISO capability. Um, now, this camera goes up to, you know, 25,600 ISO, which is, <laughs> which is insane. Um, you're not going to ever be shooting at an ISO that high. However, it is important to note that if we compare this to, like, the 3200 that this camera um, succeeds, um, you know, you will see less noise in photos when shot at the same ISO. So there is going to be a slight improvement there. Um, this camera also shoots video at 60 frames a second in 1080p as well. Um, in the past, you had to drop down to 720p if you went to shoot 60 frames a second. So that's also something very, very important. Um, Nikon, Nikon, they've also released this camera with a new 18 and 55 VR2 lens. And this lens is a lot more, um, a lot more compact than the previous 18 and 55. Um, I will do more testing and report back my findings about image quality. But so far, I really, really like it. Um, it complements the much smaller size of the D3300. So for those that are looking for a very, very small and compact, um, lightweight entry level DSLR, the 3300 makes a lot of sense. Um, let's go ahead and take a closer look at the camera in detail, and I'll go over more of the new features. The first thing that I noticed about the D3300 whenever I took it out of the package is its small size. Um, we, we're living in a world now where basically the smartphones have started to re completely replace small compact point and shoot cameras. So a lot of people that are going to be going to a DSLR these days are going to be looking for better image quality than what they get out of their smartphone. And of course they're used to small compact devices. So it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for camera manufacturers to make uh, their entry level DSLRs very, very large. So having a camera like the 3300 that's much smaller makes a lot of sense. Um, this camera also has the 18 to 55 VR2 lens that it comes with. And this lens is a lot more compact than the previous version. Um, just like the Nikon 1 series cameras, this lens has the ability to collapse whenever it's not in use. And basically, just like on those uh, 1 series lenses, you just press the button here and the, and the uh, lens extends out and it's ready to use. So, you know, it is a kit lens, of course, so I'm not expecting, you know, just world-changing performance out of it, but it is nice that Nikon decided to update the lens and make it a bit smaller in the process to go with the new smaller bodies. Whenever we look at the display on this camera, um, it is a display that's laid out pretty much exactly like how we, uh, how we find the display on the 5300 and the 5200. So now we have graphical representations for not only the f-stop, but also the ISO and the shutter speed. So for beginners, this is going to be something that's very, very good because it gives you a nice quick graphical representation to remind you what all those settings do. And uh, it's, something that, uh, it's something that I loved on those cameras, so it only makes sense that Nikon put it in this one as well because I feel like it's something, that, something that's going to help out a lot of people. Um, as I mentioned before, this camera does have an HDR mode. <clears throat> it took me a little while to find it. It's not like the more advanced HDR mode found on the 7100 and uh, 5300 and some of the higher end cameras. Um, on this camera, it's actually found under the effects menu. 
And once we're in the effects menu, like on other Nikon bodies, we just give this back dial a whirl here. And there's a lot of other settings in here that we're familiar with from previous Nikon bodies. But as we keep scrolling, we will now find this new mode. So it's called HDR painting. So the HDR mode, it's not really very advanced. I mean, it's something that's going to be applied more as an effect, you know, but um, as I said before, this, this range of camera is basically going to start to take over what compact cameras used to be. So it makes a lot of sense to have, you know, some compact camera like features. Um, I also noticed that there is, all, uh, there's also a easy panorama mode on this camera. So basically, you know, if you're familiar with Sony, uh, Sony cameras, uh, think, think sweet panorama. It works very, very similar uh, to, to that um, feature on the Sony models. And as you can see, this is a quick panorama I shot earlier. And when you hit the OK button, it kind of pans across the image. So yeah, you know, it's a, it's a pretty nice, pretty nice option to have on a camera. Um, no Wi-Fi built into this one, but as I mentioned before, you do have the option of using Nikon's WU-1A wireless adapter. The other thing that a lot of people are excited about, though, is the new ability to shoot video in 1080p at 60 frames a second. Um, so if you're going to be doing any type of action video or anything, and you want to, especially if you want to be able to slow it down later on, <clears throat> being able to shoot in 60, in 60 frames a second is going to make a big difference there. And uh, of course, you'll be able to do so now in the full 1080 resolution. So that's very good also. And of course, like other uh, Nikon models in this range, including the previous 3200, we also have the ability to shoot uh, video in manual. So we can change all of our camera's manual settings in that mode. And of course, you have the ability to be able to manually set your audio levels also. So definitely, uh, definitely some nice features there. This camera does go up to a slightly higher um, ISO than the previous models did. So we basically have one stop higher. You know, instead of being able to go just to 12,800, we can now go to 25,000. Um, and so, you know, it's one of those things. As I said before, you're not going to be shooting at that high of an ISO, but we will, we do see a slight improvement on this camera when shooting at lower ISOs. So if we compare, say, you know, 800 to 800 on the 3200, we will see a little bit of a difference. But do keep in mind, it's not going to be a world changing difference. But it always is nice to see a little bit of improvement as, uh, as the cameras go forward. All in all, I would say this is a very, very good camera. Um, there's really not anything negative to say about it. Um, it's basically about the same price as the 3200 whenever it was first announced. Um, on this side, we've got pretty much the same things that you have on a 3200. You've got your remote jack, you've got your microphone jack, and then we have our analog output slash USB, and then our mini HDMI there as well. Like the DF that we looked at not long ago, and the 5300, this camera does use Nikon's slightly higher capacity um, ENEO 14A battery. Um, this camera will still take the regular ENEO 14 also. Uh, but with the new battery, we get, you know, we get about 200 shots more per charge than we did on the previous D3200. So that's nice. You know, as Nikon starts to put more emphasis on video, it makes sense for them to also give us a slightly larger capacity battery also. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments, uh, definitely write me below, and uh, don't be, uh, you know, don't be a stranger. You know, I'm I always read all my comments, whether or not I reply. And uh, definitely don't forget to subscribe. We will be doing a comparison very very soon between this camera and the 3200. So definitely be on the lookout for that. Until next time, this is Jeremy Smith, Photog Day the Great, signing off.